you ever found yourself without your ukulele but wishing that you could practice or you actually physically can't practice but you really want to get better and so you need some ways that you can improve well i have some answers for you today hi i'm brie your qualified music teacher and i'm here today to teach you five ways that you can practice without your instrument Today I'm going to be focusing on the ukulele, but these tips can work for a variety of instruments, but mostly for stringed instruments. I found myself in this situation just today and last night actually. I'm fine, but I was admitted up to hospital and at the moment, you know, no one can go and visit you, so it's a pretty lonely, boring place. So I used some of these strategies that I could practice to keep me entertained. And it's now inspired this video. First of all, there's research backing up mental practice. Mental practice is quite amazing. It's been established through various studies that once physical action has been established, that it can be reinforced and improved on simply by imagining it. Pretty neat. These studies have been done on sports people, such as basketball players, to musicians, like on keyboard. In these focus groups, two of the groups they usually have are one group that actually plays a specific drill or practice and the second group who does the same exercise but in their mind and they've found that usually both groups get around the same results so this is an incredibly effective way to practice so how are some of the ways that you can practice mentally well let's think about our chord positions for example say you're just a beginner and you have learnt where your fingers go for the G chord but you're still wanting to get better at that. Reinforce it, establish it better, and make that go into your muscle memory. Repetition is key to do this. Something you can do is you can just place up your fingers and imagine that you're playing C, G, A minor, F, and you would only do this if you've really established where your fingers need to go. It's okay if they're still moving slowly, that's expected in early days of practice, but you do need to know that your fingers place in the correct position in the right place so that you don't go and then go on your ukulele and your fingers aren't anywhere near where they're supposed to be. Another way you could do this is you can hold up your forearm and you can actually practice as if this is your fretboard. C, G, A minor, F. It doesn't have to be just chords though. You can practice melodies if you want to across strings, um, even your C major scale. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Our next way you can practice is to drum to strum. <laughs> a little term I've come up with, which is basically just tapping to learn rhythms. You could do this on your chest, on your steering wheel, maybe not while driving, <laughs> on your desk, or even clicking. Let's take the island strum for example. We count one and two and three and four and. Let's drum it one and two and three and four and you can just use one hand i like to use two and use one hand on what the down, down strum would be and one hand on what the up strum would be even better practice is to see what i you can do what i'm doing speak while you tap out that rhythm because that's good practice towards eventually singing while strumming you're separating what you say from what you play or you could simply just pretend one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And if you're practicing your fretting hand and pretending to strum, you can absolutely just pretend to play and it can help as long as you're visualizing it, taking it slow and really focusing on where those fingers would go. Another great thing to practice is your music theory. Now this is going to be different for everyone depending on what level you're at. But for many people watching this, I know that I've been focusing on beginner content. So you might be focusing on note names or even finger names. So it can help to write down a fretboard, draw all the strings, all the frets. I'll put a little printout somewhere below that you can download and fill in the gaps if you like. Or just mentally think about your strings. So you have G, C, E, A. And if you know your musical alphabet, which is a, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, and continues on again and again and again, then it can help to try to keep memorizing that, keep reciting the order of those notes. And a good way to remember which notes don't have that sharp in between is the letters B and E, or just the word B. 
you can think of the song let it be uh, this is a really good way for association to remember what to say and I change the words a little bit to <laughs> B and E, B and E, B and E, O, B and E. There are no sharps that come after B or E. <laughs> Whatever works for you. So you can remember that musical alphabet. That's called the chromatic scale when we're learning just all of the notes, including the sharps. You could also say the flats, but that's for another lesson. Or just writing down where each note is on your fretboard. So you might try to find all the G's or all the A's. And I'll go into depth in this a bit more in a lesson pretty soon. So don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on that one. And your fingers. So a common thing when learning ukulele is trying to get your brain to connect with moving different fingers. Because often in our everyday tasks, we really rely on our sort of pinching fingers, I guess. You're not using your other hands for so much other than maybe typing. So, we are going to name our fingers. You hold up one hand and you would say a finger number. And remember we have thumb, first, second, third, fourth. And you just simply say the name of a finger and put it down. Or you can get a family member to do it. Third finger, thumb, pinky, first finger, then together. First finger, fourth finger, thumb, third finger, both thumb and pinky. <laughs> it's pretty tricky, but it's really good for your finger dexterity and connecting your brain to which fingers to move. And one of the best things you can do is to practice singing. Singing is great for your oral practice, so really learning to hear as well. Um, so singing melodies that you're learning, even if it's a solo piece and even if you're not a singer, practice humming or singing notes, la 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 la, to try to memorize different melodies of songs. You'll find that it helps your sort of, I guess, inner ear when it comes to playing pieces and to eventually play by ear, which more lessons on that to come as well. Another really cool tip, and this one you do need an instrument for, but not ukulele, is you can actually play everything you know on a guitar. And I'm not gonna tell you everything this week. You're going to have to stay tuned and wait for a lesson coming up that will teach you all about that. It blew my mind when I learned this and it seems so simple now, I know. I don't know why I hadn't thought of it before, but I'm sure you'll love it too. If you try any of these mental strategies and you've found that it's a game changer for you, I would love to know in the comments below or if you have your own mental strategies. There are so many, I could go through more and maybe I will in a future video, but focus on these for now and you'll be set for practice, whether you're in the office on the bus, train, or stuck in a boring hospital room, which I hope you're not. And thank you for watching. You can check out my other videos and subscribe and can't wait to see you in future lessons. Thanks for joining me.